SpaceX Starship program boasts the world's tallest and biggest rocket ever built in human history. The end goal is to carry humans and cargo to Mars. 20 years in the making, the project has undergone major design changes, multiple test launches, lots of anticipation, as well as crashes. So what is Starship? How has it been developed over the years? And what's the prospect of this ambitious dream of Elon Musk? This video is supported by Curiosity Stream. Get access to my streaming video service, Nabula, a streaming award nominated service when you sign up for Curiosity Stream at the link down below. The Starship program, formerly known as BFR, Big Falcon Rocket, and ITS, Interplanetary Transport System, is Elon Musk's mega rocket ambition to take humans to Mars and eventually help us become a space-faring civilization. To its core, Starship is a super heavy lift launch vehicle that can transport large payloads of up to 100 tons to orbit. While referring to Starship as a giant rocket, it actually has two parts, a two-stage vehicle. Each of them will have its own system of rockets. The spacefaring part, Starship, or the second stage, is multifunctional. It could serve as a crewed capsule for astronauts, an unmanned cargo delivery vehicle, or an interplanetary fuel tanker to refuel other spacecrafts. Starship alone is 165 feet tall and 30 feet wide. It sports six Raptor engines, providing it with 5,500 kilonewton of thrust. To get the spacecraft out of Earth gravity though, it needs the booster part, or the first stage. This is where Super Heavy comes in. Super Heavy is 230 feet tall, and it is expected to have a whopping 33 Raptor engines with it, giving it a total lift thrust of 74,000 kilonewton. Both of these parts will be reusable, as Musk anticipates to have rockets launching three times a day in the future. The total stack structure is a behemoth at 395 feet tall. Crucially to the mission is the Raptor engine, currently in development of version 2. It hopes to bring more power with fewer parts and smaller in size. SpaceX Raptor engine is a methane-fueled, full-flow, staged combustion cycle engine. The first of its kind, the engine is to be powered by liquid methane and liquid oxygen and is designed to be reused up to a thousand times. The design has been improved upon the Falcon Eye's existing Merlin engine. It has doubled the thrust of its predecessor at 380,000 pounds of thrust at sea level versus 190,000 pounds of its predecessor despite being a smaller size. The Raptor engine provides double the thrust of Saturn V, the tallest, heaviest, and the most powerful rocket ever built to date. The main advantage of using methane in comparison to previous rocket fuels like kerosene is it has a higher performance and is less bulky, which means the tanker can be smaller. It's also cheaper. And most importantly, it's believed that methane could be available on the surface of Mars where Starship could land and make a return trip to Earth. Methane, chemically known as CH4, could be potentially extracted with the mining of hydrogen and carbon dioxide on the Martian surface using what's called an in situ resource utilization. Starship features a total of six 3D printed Raptor engines, three of which are sea level variants dedicated for descending and landing on Mars, while the other three are used in a vacuum. Super Heavy Lift currently have 29 of those engines in testing, while future versions could be equipped with up to 33 engines. One of the most important goals for Starship is reusability. Originally conceptualized as a fully reusable carbon composite rocket in September 2016, Starship went through a major change in terms of material in September 2019, when Elon Musk switched up the material from carbon fiber to stainless steel. There are a number of reasons for this change, two of which are cost and material superiority. First, carbon fiber, a more conventional rocket building material, costs nearly 200 per kilogram, whereas it is only $3 for stainless steel. Secondly, stainless steel has a killer advantage over other materials. It has a higher melting point. Carbon fiber can only tolerate a temperature of up to 300 degrees Fahrenheit, while stainless steel can comfortably go up and even beyond 1,500 degrees Fahrenheit. On the other hand, stainless steel is also very good at not getting brittle at low temperatures, as Starship's fuel are cold liquid oxygen and liquid methane. 
The Starship has gone through many iterations in its relatively short span of life, since its first conceptual design of a rocket that's based on the Merlin engine in November 2005. Originally known as the Big Falcon rocket, Musk announced a redesign in 2017 of a rocket that's able to launch 330,000 pounds into low Earth orbit. The BFR was meant to be 30 feet wide and 348 feet tall. It also had six Raptor engines, two at sea level and four at vacuum variants. Later versions of 2018 saw a revised design of three sea level and four vacuum Raptor engines as SpaceX aimed for more power and to accommodate larger payloads. The spacecraft would have two forward flaps at the top and three aft flaps at the bottom. These flaps are to help with Starship's descent and the bottom flaps can be used as landing gears. In November of the same year, BFR was renamed to Starship and Booster was first termed Super Heavy. Since then, the Starship program has gone through multiple tests, including low altitude hop tests with Starhopper in 2019, complex aerial maneuvers and flips with SN8 in 2020, and high altitude flight tests with three prototypes SN9, SN10, and SN11. On May 5th, 2021, SN15 marked a perfect test for SpaceX as it soared 6.9 miles into the sky and made several mid-air maneuvers. Six minutes after takeoff, it safely landed on a landing pad at Boca Chica. On August 6, 2021, for the first time ever, SpaceX stacked its Starship atop a Super Heavy booster. This marks the tallest ever rocket ever built at an impressive 395 feet tall. Individually, the Super Heavy booster stands 230 feet tall and Starship SN20 added another 165 feet of height. It was an exhilarating moment for Musk as he tweeted, dream comes true. According to Elon Musk, the first orbital flight of the humongous Starship could come as early as March 2020. The company is still awaiting approval from FAA. SpaceX, along with NASA, plans to use the fully reusable Starship to land astronauts on the moon as early as 2025. While making the trip to Mars is the ultimate goal, the first flights of Starship would likely carry Starlink's satellites into orbit. Musk estimated that each launch could wind up costing less than $10 million. Compared to a typical rocket launch in the past, which cost anywhere from tens to hundreds of millions of dollars, SpaceX is already changing the space launch landscape. The launch cost could even go down to $2 million per launch if SpaceX can utilize the full reusability and thrifty use of propellant. Building Starship is the first step to getting humans back to the moon. If you want to understand how that can be done, check out our sponsor of today, Curiosity Stream, a subscription streaming service with thousands of documentaries and nonfiction titles. You can start with the episode Return to the Moon, which explores the various ways and vehicles needed to getting us back to the moon. Other than this series, Curiosity Stream has an entire section focused on telling stories of space. Check them out. Right now, Curiosity Stream is also running a promotion. All you need to do is to go to curiositystream.com slash curious elephant to get a full year of access to Curiosity Stream for less than $15. What's more, your subscription of Curiosity Stream also comes with Nebula access. While Curiosity Stream is all about big budget nonfiction videos, Nebula is built for educational creators. Nebula is my go-to streaming video service built and owned by creators like myself, Tech Arta, Real Engineering, Polymatter, and more. It's a platform without ads. So you just watch stuff you want without any interruptions and it allows us creators to make good content for you. Nebula includes hour long, high quality documentaries from your favorite creators and you can get Nebula for free right now when you sign up for CuriosityStream with the link in the description down below.